Shalom, this is David. Sabote, this is Jeff. And today we are recommending Factorio. I don't forget when do I not say Sabote if you say Shalom at the front? You don't know. Okay. But it's fine. It's I, a habit. You've done I'm Jeff. You, you've there, done I just like, cut it in. <laughs> you've done like eighty five percent of all the content on this <laughs> channel, so you have a lot of experience. Anyway, so this is me showing uh, the world creation in Factorio. Factorio is an, is efficiency simulation. Uh, or if you prefer to be vulgar, efficiency porn. Uh, can yes. be. So this is me going through what I tend to like to do uh, when creating a new world. I don't like the monsters attacking because the combat in this game is boring. Uh, but I still show it off. And uh, I prefer a lot of resources. And uh, let me just switch some things because the like six worlds in a row I generated weren't very good. So <laughs> the, those are the settings I actually use. Uh, so we're going to give you a little bit of a, uh, an, an example of what Factorio is. So Factorio is you have crashed on a planet. You need to build a spaceship to get out of there, but you can't do it by yourself. You need machines. You need production line. And this is me just scoping out what resources are there. And now I have to get out of the forest. There's a tiny person in there somewhere. Somewhere. Now, you never have to eat, you never have to sleep, because those are not fun parts of survival games. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess this is, at a high level, like your camera, a survival game. It is. Um, it though, leans more towards the, I, I would say, like um, like an incredible machine kind of thing. Right. Well, if, it's... If, if you had, like, a person that was in the world making it, instead of just, like, disembodied you. Well, also, there's the... Um, the, the bugs, if you have them set to just attack, um, then then you have to deal with bugs constantly attacking you. If you don't, then you can just, uh, just, just build efficiency. Also, I didn't want to make you sit through it, so I, I did <laughs> speed you. it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, showing, Some choice edits. Yes, I, uh... I also have not played the game in a bit because even though I put like 60 hours into it real quick, I, I haven't gone back to it in a little while. Um, just It is a lot of fun, but I lose myself when I play this game. Uh, and right now I'm just showing off like kind of what you do in the beginning of the game, which is you need iron plates. And to get iron plates, you have to put iron ore into a furnace with some coal. So I put down the mining drill with some coal in it so it'll drill and the it outputs to the furnace with some coal so it outputs uh, iron uh, iron plates. Now you need the iron plates for a lot of things, but right now I'm building a very useful structure in the beginning of any Factorio game, which is the uh, four-way self-fulfilling like mining machine, which is what okay. I needed all that stone for. So you build four of those electric or four of those coal mining things and they will consume coal to mine and then put the coal they've mined into the other mining machine but they consume less coal than they mine so it's essentially just a way to have constantly refilling mining supplies <laughs> it's, a, it's a mining Ouroboros exactly um, and this is me just cutting down some wood because I need to make some boxes and you'll notice that, hey, all of a sudden, I have 23 coal in significantly faster time than I did if I would have just mined it. And that's this game. I have a solution. Doing it myself is slow. What's a faster way to do this? Um, One of the default settings, you said that the monsters or the bugs just attack you all the time. Mm -hmm. Is, isn't there a version where it only attack you at night or at intervals or something? Uh, I only, I've only seen it where they, they only attack you if you attack first. Okay. Or they, uh, they just attack you if your pollution gets to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, this is me needing more stone, so I just put a bunch of coal into that machine. And there are a bunch of faster ways to put stuff into the machines and pull stuff out of the machines. I'm just slowly remembering them. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, going through things quickly because I need a lot of iron plates, 
So, and I need a lot of furnaces to make the drills because you, you have to have a furnace to make a drill because the drill requires iron plates and a furnace. Uh, so everything requires more pieces and more little bits. So now I am showing one of the basic things you can do, which is conveyor belts and robotic arms. So these are coal ar or burner arms or burner inserters is what they call it. So it runs on coal. So as long as it can get coal into it, it can run and automatically put whatever is on the yellow bar side where the yellow arrow is. Mm-hmm. So now... Is this like... Uh, is there any way to zoom in, or is this the... This oh, you, is just the size of everything. Oh, you can zoom way in. Okay. I just I don't. See, I want to see the... I want to see those little arms. <laughs> you want to see the little arms? I want to see the arms go here, here. <laughs> well... Uh, well, there you go. You, get, you at least get to see a little bit more constantly. So this this is what you do in this game uh, at the very large like abstract is you have a problem how do you solve the problem with the tools you have at hand well I want to automate getting coal into the the drill and into the furnace and then I want to automate getting coal or getting iron plates out of it so it'll just keep doing it and this is a very simple way of doing it and me, you know, troubleshooting and realizing, oh, I put the belt too close to a thing, so it won't do what I need it to, and then continuing to do that. Now, it's all sped up, but um, this is this is the fun part of the game. Also, you can just dump stuff that you happen to have in your inventory, and those are conveyor belts. Um, I can see they are conveying. Yes, and they are belts. So... There's also uranium. You can just kind of see it right there. That's one of the power supplies you can have. Because you, you do have electricity, and I will show off two of them in a moment. But this is copper, because you also need copper plates, and copper wire, and circuits, and various other things to make everything work. The The goal is ostensibly to make a rocket ship, but... To get you can home. do other stuff too, right? Like, you could also strip mine. Well, you can't strip mine the entire planet because if you don't set a map size, it's just infinite. Mm. Uh, so this is like your research, and you need uh, yeah, red texture. science. You need red science and a science facility to research. Uh, and I'll show off science facilities in a second. Um, but let's say, okay, I want to build a lab. Oh, well, I need circuits. Well, I need copper plates for circuits because I need copper cable. And you need a copper plate to make copper cable, which you then... But hey, this is what it looks like when you've been playing a map for, <laughs> for 16 hours. <laughs> so that's solar power, that's steam power. Uh, and then this is kind of what a base will look like. Now, not everything is as efficient as it can be, but it still looks really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is an, um, an automated engine of just make stuff. And that makes me very happy. Um... So these are your electric mining drills. You don't need to put coal into them. They just produce. And they have a bunch of chips in them that make them more efficient. So they use elec less electricity. So I need fewer plants. Um, so you're, short, you're sh making a shortcut by running across the, right. the moving walkways. Also, if you put down cement, which is what this is, you just run faster by default. You can also get robo legs that just help you run faster. And also robo legs. And I assumed you were some sort of superhuman robot in the first place, <laughs> considering the amount of machinery that you have put together. Kind of, yeah. But uh, this is a later on into the tech tree. Uh, there are different colors of science, and I'm clearly making them all here. Uh, mm -hmm. I can see there's a there's a line of red science. There's <laughs> there's a, a red, of green, green blue. Science. There's some uh, blue science. There's also yellow and purple and and various other. And you have to have a production line to make all of it. So this is like my gray uh, production line, my gray science production line, which is military. So it's a bunch of like ammo and gun things. These are my supply belts that I just run in a line, so they can have facilities based off of them. Uh, this is where batteries are made from an oil refinery that I don't show off. Like this is, this is a product of 16 hours of tinkering with a thing, and you can even do it faster. Also, if you want to cut down trees, you can use what I did before, or you can just shoot them with a shotgun. <laughs> you can use a shotgun to cut down trees, of course. And now very this, efficient. Now this is the automatic <laughs> shotgun, so it is significantly faster. And the the fastest way to cut down trees, though, is with robots, which you can build little robots that'll be in your backpack, 
or uh, part of a robotic network and they instantly cut down trees and then you get the wood from them. Uh, but I'm going to show off combat real quick, which is, again, not fun. This is also not the most effective way to do it. Uh, <laughs> because there are a bunch of different Another weapons. Another efficiency like. game full of roaches. <laughs> yes. Well, that's not efficiency. That's just cleaning. Okay. And, and, yeah, that's, that's true. That's An another... Uh, literal Skinner Box game. Yeah, also, sk another Skinner Box game. I shot a lot of shells. I killed a lot of bugs. There's a lot of bugs. Uh, but the thing is, I don't have enough long range to kill enough of the main bases because of the big worms that you can kind of see in the top right uh, that shoot those things that are very deadly. Uh... But you can do turrets that have really long range and kill them. You can build a tank. You've got rockets. You've got a flamethrower, which is super effective as long as you don't you set the forest on fire. Nuke. Yeah, I think that's in okay. there. Yeah. 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 But the there's a lot to the game. There's a whole lot to the game. And, and I've streamed it a few times, and that's on our channel if you want a little bit more in-depth. Like, it's look true. We've got a few episodes of the Jeff and David show live. Right. Which is a thing we did do in the past. <laughs> Before life happened. Uh, uh, it's, it still yeah. exists on the internet. It, it exists on the channel forever. Right. Or until YouTube dies. Which is the end of civilization. Because yes. that's Google. Yes. So. <laughs> but uh, that's there if you want a little bit more in depth. But the, the in, it is a game where the point is, I need to do this thing. Well, I need this to do that. Well, I need this to do that. Well, I need this to do that. Let's make something... Let's make a machine that will automatically produce all the steps I need, all the materials I need, and the steps I need, and the quantities I need, assemble them for me automatically, and then put them out. Because if you try to do everything manually, just building the spaceship, like if you had all the materials on you and you wanted to build the spaceship, I think it would take something like 300 hours, like in real time. Because mm, there are yeah, too many right. individual parts for you to do. But if you parse it all out... Um, and just have all your machines do it, it takes like yeah, 10 minutes once you hit that point. Probably less. It's, it's been a while since I've done that math. How, how is the chill music? I feel, I feel like chill music is very important for this genre. It's, there's not really a ton of music. What, what you get is the sound of the machinery just being is where it's it comes just from. Just being. Okay. Like just that, that rhythmic thrum of the electric furnace or all those inserter arms working in tandem or like whenever you're sitting next to the solar panels and the uh, electricity accumulators kick on and it's got that really nice like air explosion crackle kind of sound like the the soundtrack of the game is mechanization i see i do appreciate a good uh now there is some a music. good percussive industrial soundtrack. Right. There, is there, it, but like but like but like bright industrial instead of dark right. industrial. Dark industrial. No, there there is some music in there. It just it was very atmospheric and it never really stood out enough over the sound of the thing I was building. Like the sound of laying down like a hundred conveyor belts all at once or or stuff like that. That's that's the sound of Factorio. Quick top three mm -hmm. list within a video. Top oh. three best. Uh, I don't know if there's actually three. I just chose that number right. <laughs> okay. Top three best machinery slash drones in media or fiction. Uh, I really only had one in mind, but I thought they would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hold on. Maybe there's another one. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I think I can best think media of, or, or, or we'll best, say media. So like movies, video games, you know, whatever music. Best that's machines fine. or drones. Machines, drone, machinery, the the, the, uh, the thrum of mechanization. Hmm. The sound the spaceships make in Earth Final Conflict. The TV show is really good. Nerd. <laughs> I don't know if that's top three. I just remember that being really good. <laughs> it's memorable, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I am very partial to... This is no surprise. Oh, let's, let's hear it. Uh, the sound design of David Lynch. Weird. Uh, I know, right? Uh, so I always think of the... I suppose the classic example is Eraserhead.
which has just like a there's just like an industrial drone through the whole thing. Razorhead's very good. It's a very weird movie. Never seen it, so that's not shocking to anyone. That's, yeah, that's not shocking to me. No. Uh, well, as as far as David Lynch things go, also the the sound design for the famous or infamous part eight of season three of Twin Peaks or Twin Peaks The Return. I uh, you ask, just ask your wife about yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> my wife would know about that one. Uh, what about... Um, I mean, just as far as like little machines that I like, the little helper uh, floaty drones in Soma were great. Okay. I guess I could also... I would also put out there the... There's like this particular sound uh, from Silent Hill 2, I hmm. think, is in the apartments. I wonder if I could find that and cut that in. Probably. But it's kind of like a... Oh. Great. that kind of thing yeah i guess i would do I would enjoy have to say... now this is leaning towards the dark industrial of yeah. course but, you know, I do. Yeah. my my alarm on my phone <laughs> right. is pyramid heads knife scraping it's a real good it's a real good encouragement to stop that sound from happening <laughs> so i i used to have like commodore 64 music as my alarm to wake up with and if do you know what Commodore sixty four music sounds like? Yeah, it's got, it's got the the that Sid chip Sid chip like, kind of. Well, it's it's got effect. it's a it's very aggressive sound. A lot of the 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 very sounds they were very bright, punchy. very trebly, very aggressive. Like not a lot of warm sounds. So it'd be like Monty on the Run. The intro to Monty on the Run specifically would kick on at full volume. And my wife was very unhappy with me. So now my alarm is Tuvan throat singing. Okay. Which is also like, oh, I mean, it's fine. It's just a guy can, who can produce two notes uh, at once. Which is impressive. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think that that is kind of like the... Well, I'm just thinking of Silent Hill music. This, in Silent <laughs> Hill 3, the introduction to Claudia and the... Uh, I think of this. I think this track is just called "Ritual" or something like that. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of. <laughs> layered in the background. Well, this is this is very specifically from Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tones live at the Quick. So it's a very happy song. It's it's the okay. thing they do before Ashu Dekio, I think, where they get. Um, uh conga roll is the guy's name and he he actually has an album it's called back to the future because he's tuvan t-u-v-a-n that's very good that's yes. very very good yes yes uh and he's it's a very he's really interesting to listen to. I actually like his his stuff a fair amount. But it's Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tone, so all the music's good. Uh and he plays with they all they always play with very interesting people. That album has a bassoonist running through multi effects. That make look, you can put anything <laughs> through a multi effect. It doesn't have to just be guitar. Right. You can put you can put any any kind of signal through there. Yes. You can get some good sounds. Yeah, that's putting, putting a putting a keyboard through a guitar pedal. You can get some pretty cool, yeah, sounds out of that too. Well, there is a there is a band, and now I'm forgetting their name. 
Uh, it, they might just be called the Kings, but the entire conceit was it's a bass player, a piano player, and a drummer, and they wanted to play a bunch of guitar stuff without using a guitar. Mm-hmm. So the keyboard player actually built a keyboard that had this massive whammy bar on it. So you could hit notes and like do bends and stuff on the keyboard. Now, I have it pictured in my mind a humorously large whammy bar. Uh, it is. Hold on. We'll okay. Keep talking. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining uh, like one of those uh, paper cutters. Uh, bigger than that. <laughs> Where the, the whammy bar is at a 45 degree angle and the entire length of like the 88 key keyboard. Right. <laughs> okay. It's the band called the Crash Kings that actually Crash has... Kings. Uh, some very, very good things. Let me see if I can find that stupid keyboard that makes me very happy. Okay. If you uh, can find it, I can, I can drop it in here for yeah, the folks I, at home. The visual medium. Visual medium. Yes, I, I do have it. Uh, it'll, it'll be in Skype just, just so that you can, you can enjoy this along with sure, me. Sure, yes. But, I can enjoy it along with the, uh, the listening, viewing audience. But it's, uh... It's it's one of those things where I'm I'm very happy that that is what they did. Um, I really hope I just okay, gave you the. It, it could be a bigger. It could bar. be bigger, but not much. It like it's already almost the length of the keyboard. Like mm-hmm. when the bar is all the way up. <laughs> but they've also just written some good songs. So if you want a good band, Crash Kings, they're a good band. Uh. But yeah, that that was that was Factorio. That was a game about efficiency and making your own problems to solve them. Yeah. It is part of the trifecta of games that I really like that I don't think I could ever get Jeff to play. Uh, though while I would never ask him to play House Flipper, I have asked him to play Factorio. <laughs> I say that Factorio seems like it has a little bit more going on than House Flipper. <laughs> Yes. A little bit more consistent. Uh, I don't know what you mean. As a final product. Uh, it's, I'm, as, uh, wait, I'm just, wait. The House Flipper was fine. It had no bugs. It had no run it, errors. I mean, it had a lot of roaches. Bugs. It did have bugs. You're right. But Some bugs. It's not like it was a memory hog or it, like, no. tanked if you turned on too many lights. It didn't really tank when you turned all those lights on. Uh, more like, like two more lights and my frame rate would have just been like single oh, digits. It would yeah. have been would have been virtual hide light like. Oh boy. <laughs> what a terrible, awful, horrible game. <laughs> that game is such garbage and I'm so happy it exists. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <there's> a... <laughs> it's not uh, often yes. that a game can make Stone Keep look like high definition. Look, so. look, look, look. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you slander Stonekeep. Stonekeep is an elf person who elf trolled. I don't remember the name of. I'm gonna Wahooka? look up again. Wahooka. Yes, <laughs> I, Wahooka is. He is the great good. Wahooka. <laughs> Fear me. Uh, I I can't do his voice. It requires too much smoking. But bah. No, like the Animaniacs people were voice actors in that game. That game is great, but it's also ugly. <laughs> But it's not sure. virtual highlighter. Ugly. That that game is disgusting. Stonekeep has heart. It does. Yeah, it has, it has some heart. It also, it also has, has a, very repetitive corridors with heart. Also, the grossest eating noises. Yes, mouth noises. Yes. Ah. Uh, RPG limit break is a thing. It is. For the, <laughs> it is. It is a good thing. Uh, I'd say it's much more niche than your your GDQs. Yeah. Well, it also. I, mean, you, I wouldn't think. I don't know. It, it doesn't seem. When you look at it, when you look at a run, and it's like, this is a speed run, and this speed run is seven and a half hours long. Yep. My first thought is, I'm not going to watch that. And then my next thought is, I've watched seven and a half hours of this speed run. <laughs> yes. You know, like, not at once. It's like, I don't even like playing Pokemon that much. Why have I watched the entire run of Pokemon Crystal? Oh right, there's, there's some good stuff. On there. <laughs> there's yeah. some really I'm, good I'm stuff. Still, on there. I'm still watching the Xenoblade Chronicles two run. <laughs> it's a goes, really long run. It's a very long run. It's very very long game. Very very long. Yeah, I I it do is, recommend. It is run very efficiently though. I do recommend the Breath of Fire uh, race. It is very good. Okay, is Ryu cuts caught on that? Yes. Okay, good because I can't. 
What I really want is a Breath of Fire 2 run for Mario Kart's Coddle, but that isn't a race. Because I just want... Cause I want I want Ryu to take me through Breath of Fire 2, which is a game I never played, yet is also at the same time very influential because of reasons. Mm-hmm. Because like as as a story time, as a young <laughs> as a young boy growing up in the 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 rough rough streets of uh m- middle class Houston, Texas, uh, <laughs> uh we would have uh Nintendo Power. Mm-hmm. Which we had inherited, well, but by the time that me and my brother got Nintendo Power, you know, it had been out for a while. Mm-hmm. Not for too long, but we had inherited, like, the full collection, the back catalog, ever since the first, like, sort of uh, issue from our aunt, Aunt Cheryl. And she had, you know, even the first one with the, the Mario 2 with the clay, clay the, figures. The, on the clay front. figures, yeah. So we would, for most of our childhood, we would have, like, every month be Nintendo Power, which was very awesome. Mm-hmm. And I remember just like looking at like the art of Breath of Fire 2 and being like, this is the coolest <laughs> ever. <laughs> like, could this be any more dope and awesome? Uh, and it, mm-hmm. it has only waned slightly over time. So, But I've never never actually played any of the Breath of Fire games, despite... Uh, despite like looking at them in, in you know like a bunch of other games too and just nintendo power forms just like static images and artwork and like you know like uh, concept art and character drawings and stuff wait really yeah what i well, not, like maybe not like concept art but like you know the layouts of like the the magazine and then like it would have character drawings in there right. too of like the characters and i'm just like these things are dope uh let's see if i can find a picture of what i'm thinking about the yeah. exact image I'm thinking of from Breath of Fire Two. So I've I've played Breath of Fire Two a hundred percent like through like two or three times at least. It's a good game. <laughs> it's real good. Breath of Fire One is just like, hey, here's a pretty good game. Breath of Fire Two is like, what if we do all that but better, and not have a character that used to be like, like, horribly racistly offensive. That we, we just made very pale in the American version. Yeah, I'm gonna paste this little artwork in there. Okay. Yeah, like this this is the this is like one the art of like Ryu main character. Yeah, that's yes. This like this like informed like fifty percent of <laughs> notebook drawings for <laughs> like a period of two years or so in like elementary yep. school or middle school, whenever this actually was. Yeah. It's like if only I could be as awesome as this picture is. <laughs> Yeah, well, very few of us get to be Ryu. A lot of us get to be uh, Bo, though. That's his fat dog friend. Hey. Because, <laughs> like, a lot of... The, I'm, like, looking at, like, the artwork from the game and just, like, a Google search, and I'm like, yeah, I, like, I remember a lot of this, but, again, have never played the game, so it's just, like, I guess this was just in the Nintendo Power. <laughs> so... I, I would also actually... the, the, <laughs> the cover art is completely incongruous. Not complete. Let's say that it's um. Oh, uh, not the it's the, the the actual box art for the American version. Uh, <laughs> let's say that Ryu has a different look to him. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just a bit of a different look. Yeah. But um, no, I would I would actually recommend you play through Breath of Fire too. Yeah, I don't uh, think that I will play through it myself. But that's I, why I was saying that. Really, really want you have a Breath commute? of Fire one. <laughs> Uh, I guess it's possible. You have a commute yeah. and a phone. Like you can do this. Sure, sure. This is this is possible. I'd rather. I think I'd rather just go through a more something more succinct speed run or maybe a let's play or something. There is like a that. screenshot let's play of Breath of Fire Two that is very good. Uh, I do recommend that one. And uh, ideally, like I said, ideally it would be right. Ryu and his duck friend. <laughs> yes. Quack. <laughs> Um, but no, Breath of Breath of Fire Two. Like I will replay the first like thirty percent of Breath of Fire One, and then be like, I just want to play Breath of Fire Two again. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I I have not I've not actually finished the Breath of Fire One run from uh well, it was, it was Quest on for the, Glory or yeah Quest for Glory yeah so it was on the Limit Break channel right. Uh, it looks, it's pretty. It's pretty entertaining, but and and it, it is, let's say, a, it's a 
I can appreciate the sophistication for the time, that kind of thing. But it is yeah. very simple. So it is. Uh, I will. I will say that. Um, Breath of Fire 2 came out for the Super Nintendo and the Game Boy Advance. Uh, the Game Boy Advance version is ugly. Oh, okay. It went, they went with different color palettes that maybe work better on the GBA screen, but if you're playing on an emulator like any sane person would, mm-hmm. it's it's really ugly. And Or on an SNES classic. Wink! Wink! Uh, Sorry, I winked very loud. You, you did wink a little loud. <laughs> But uh, it's it's a very good game. The only thing the GBA added that the Super Nintendo did not have was a run button. But I mean, that's what Turbo is for. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there's there's ways, the ways and means. Ways there are ways and means. means. So it's Breath of Fire Two is a very good game. I'm just gonna say everybody should just play Breath of Fire Two. Also play Factorio. It's a good also game. Also Factorio. Yes, Factorio. I the game we're recommending. recommending. Because Factorio, let's say, is it's a lot less likely to be the source of like modern furrydom than Breath of Fire. But nonetheless, I mean, an entertaining product. Cat did lead to some things for some people, sure. I'm sure. Um, Undoubtedly. <laughs> it's like it's like the Japanese role playing version of like Disney's Robin Hood. <laughs> Well, I mean, Disney's Robin Hood was all the characters. Uh, Breath of Fire 2 is, well, here's a cat lady, and here's a lady with bird wings, and here's a snake lady. Though the snake lady was in Breath of Fire 1, and there was a lady with bird wings in Breath of Fire 1. That is true. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it Breath of Fire 2 is a very good game. But Factorio, I can say mm-hmm. without a doubt, I have spent more time playing Factorio than I spent playing Persona 3. Fez. Fez specifically. Okay. Yeah. That's a very strange uh, metric, but... I mean, that's a Japanese RPG. Yeah. It's also, but you mean like Fez, the whole package, or just the Fez expansion part? I assume you mean the whole package. Well, I mean, the game is Fez, and then there's an extra chapter that yeah. you and I played through. Um, I guess it's Fez. Is it, is it Fez? Fez? Like Festival? Because it's that's Festival weird. Edition or whatever. Which it's is not it would not be the weirdest subtitle on a Japanese still still the way game. to play that that's that's also a good game Persona also. Four better game uh, Pers- Persona Four is you know mountains up there Persona Three is very good Persona Three but is it's a game that forgot it had a storyline until the last it, like third until of it. like sixty hours in it for like oh crap we have characters and we have to do twists and plot twists and crap. Uh, it's also a little bit hard to go back to, especially if you play Persona 4, Persona 5, which have much, they're much better to play. Mm-hmm. Even Persona 4 is hard to go back to from Persona 5. Persona 5 is very, very slick and mm-hmm. has a lot of, you know, the actual playing part of the game is, you know, even better than 4. I wouldn't say that the story is better. But, you know, there's some, there's some good characters. Yes. It's... Yeah. <sighs> That's why you should play Factorio. Factorio. And maybe Breath of Fire. And maybe and Persona. Persona. But definitely and maybe Factorio. Listen to, and maybe listen to Tubin Throat Singing. Maybe maybe go look up Bela Fleck Live at the Quick. The entire thing is on YouTube, or was. If not, just buy the album. It's super good. It's really good, y'all. It's it's just it's good music. And then just look up everything that ever came out on the Commodore 64, music-wise. It's all great. Mm-hmm. I think it's called... What is it? Well, I mean, chip tunes, I guess, is the name well, of the genre. But well, it's the genre. It's like but the, you can the you can Sid, literally Sid chip. Yes, right? Sid, Sid yes. chip is the the sound chip in the Commodore sixty four. It was capable of three voices in a noise channel. But the thing is, those three voices you could reprogram on the fly to be any of the sounds it could do. I think it's three voices. So that like instead of like on like other sound chips where it's like, all right, channel one is your square wave and channel two is your triangle wave and channel three is your sine wave. Like, and that's what you had to work with. This one is like, all right, for a beat and a half, channel one is going to be square and it's going to be like noise channel for just a second. And then it's going to be square. So you could get it to sound like you had way more channels to work with than you did. Also Mm -hmm. Monty on the run has one song and it's like nine minutes. (laughs) Okay. It's I mean, all really good. 
I like I like a good long song takes you on a journey. Yes, There's entire uh, musical genres that are based on that that I enjoy a lot. <laughs> Yeah, Speaking I, of things you enjoy, if you ooh. enjoyed this video <laughs> of us rambling about uh, games we like, uh, music, and various things, uh, and you would like to uh, support us, you can do so by uh, supporting us monthly on Patreon. I'm, do, I'm, doing, I'm doing the thing, David. You, you are doing the thing. <laughs> I I'm normally trying do. to do the thing. <laughs> I'll try to do the thing. We could trade off, maybe. <laughs> Let's see how it uh, goes. You, you can support us monthly on Patreon, which is a way. If you can't support us monthly that way, you can also just give us like one-time tips uh, through our uh, just PayPal. We just have a PayPal address. So you can do that. That's nice, too. Uh, and then, of course, you can also do the, the YouTube stuff, the normal stuff, like like liking and commenting and sub- subscribing i do like reading comments it's nice to yes. <laughs> see, see what people yes. have to say about stuff i, I don't uh, respond to a lot of them but i do read all of them <laughs> yes yes of course now we of course we have such a volume of we cannot we cannot respond to all of them uh that, wait it's no more that's th- it's more that i'm at work <laughs> when i'm reading them so yeah uh, I usually read them when I get home. So I've, if there's like a, well, I read them when I'm uploading or like doing channel stuff. So like, oh, okay, I can maybe respond, answer, answer a question here or there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, square, the square. so yeah, so you can, you can do all those things. And we appreciate it. Yeah, look at that. And this is the end of the video you know the where we whisper the name of the, of, <laughs> of the game that we are recommending. Factorio. That's the one. There was a game announced at E3. That when I watched the trailer, I thought, this will destroy David. Oh, no. <laughs> what what game? It is called Satisfactory. <gasps> it is a very good name. Because in your head, you already know what it's about. <laughs> you build a factory? It It is a co-op 3D Factorio. <laughs> Where you just, you just like... Is there's like machines and automation and conveyor belts and like everything and you're just on this alien planet and you're just like make you're making a, a city machine. I was like, oh no, David will die. <laughs> I'll stop eating. Will, It'll be will great. I be responsible for this? Am I going to put this curse on him? Maybe. <laughs> Satisfactory. <laughs> like, just type that into Google real fast. Let's just see and what it gives me. Enter. Satisfactory. Ooh, this looks fun. 